Welcome back to another episode of the Tech Talks Daily Podcast, where every day we dive into the heart of innovation, explore the depths of technology and its impact on our daily lives, businesses and even world. And today I'm honoured to have Anthony Maggio, the Head of Product Management at a company called Airtable. And he's going to join me in a conversation that promises to be both enlightening and inspiring because with over a decade of experience in navigating the complex landscape of product development and management, Anthony's going to be bringing with him a wealth of knowledge and insights into the challenges and opportunities that are facing product leaders in today's rapidly evolving digital world. And in a time where technology development is accelerating and organisations are inundated with a plethora of tools aiming to support their business goals, the role of a product leader has never been more critical. So I've invited Anthony to join me today to share his unique perspective on combating challenges within the digital product supply chain and also address things like strategy drift and also how to leverage AI for greater support, and so much more. So whether you are a product leader yourself, involved in the tech industry, or simply interested in the behind the scenes of the digital product lifecycle management, this episode is tailored for you. Now, before I get today's guests on, it's time for me to mention the sponsors of Tech Talks Daily. And in an era where digital security is non-negotiable, Legacy managed file transfer tools, they simply don't cut it now. So that's where KiteWorks comes in. Revolutionising the MFT landscape with unparalleled security credentials, including the much-coveted FedRAMP moderate authorization. This isn't just about compliance, though. It's about offering a secure, efficient platform for today's remote workforce. So with KiteWorks, you can benefit from advanced file sharing, email security and customizable integrations all within a platform designed to safeguard your most sensitive data so don't let outdated technology compromise your security step into the future of secure managed file transfer get started today by going to kiteworks.com that's kiteworks.com where security meets sophistication but now it's time to get today's guests on so buckle up and hold on tight as i beam your ears all the way to san francisco where today's guest is waiting to join me. So, a massive warm welcome to the show. Can you tell everyone listening a little about who you are and what you do? All right. Well, Neil, thanks so much for having me. I'm Anthony Maggio, and I'm the VP of Product Management at Airtable, headquartered in San Francisco, and I've been here for about three and a half years. And for any of your listeners who aren't familiar with Airtable, Airtable is a low-code app platform that allows companies to really design software around their most important businesses process. Things like the product development life cycle, IT management, marketing content management, many other workflows. And in the past, creating these custom solutions, this custom software would have been a tremendous effort that required teams of developers. But now with low-code platforms like Airtable, companies can really go and build it themselves very quickly and efficiently. And I like to think I've been preparing for this job for a very long time, even going back to middle school. Uh, My first job back in seventh grade was building MS Access databases for small businesses like summer camps and dentist offices. And even then, I was amazed by the impact that I was able to have on these companies as a single individual who could build an app and really transform the way they work. Um, and I went on after college to, to work at Deloitte Consulting with uh, very large companies, enterprises, and state governments and found that they had many of the same problems. They were also struggling with inflexible tools and poor ERP software that led to poor execution. So fast forward after a decade working in many enterprise software as a service companies and startups, um, I ultimately landed at Airtable to help improve the way that these companies work. Wow, what a great backstory. And I wonder if, as that kid, if you look back when you were that kid with those Microsoft Access databases, I bet even then you had no idea just how much or how fast that pace of technological change would be throughout your life. Absolutely. You know, I was I was obsessed and interested in technology going back to an early age. And I don't think 
I could have dreamed of all the hits that I would see in my lifetime and my career uh, with the introduction of mobile and so much change on the internet. And now, of course, the advent of AI, which has continued uh, to reinvent the way that we work and interact with technology. It really has. I'm glad you've mentioned the AI there. I mean, fast forward to 2024, the digital product supply chain is becoming increasingly complex. The software continues to dominate. It's already eaten the world, we could say. But can you share any insights on some of the main challenges that you're seeing organizations facing today, especially around managing this complexity? And, and also, of course, how at Airtable you're addressing some of these challenges. Yeah, absolutely. And I think we're at a really interesting time here because the concept of a digital product supply chain or digital product life cycle isn't new, but the complexity around developing excellent digital products has really increased. Uh, and you know, every company now is becoming a digital product company. You look across every industry, banking, uh, insurance, uh, the way that, that users, the way that customers are interacting with most companies now is through a mobile app or through some type of software. And so the challenge that these companies are having is that for product managers, there's more data available than ever before. And while that should help PMs do their jobs better, it's also quite overwhelming that user and customer feedback and market data are all managed in ad hoc processes. Analytics live in their own tools. You know, team roadmaps might live in PowerPoints or spreadsheets and engineers and the ones actually building this software are working in tools like Jira. So there's really no single source of truth, no practical way to orchestrate that whole life cycle from customer insights all the way through product launches and delivery. And that's a challenge that I hear about very frequently from chief product officers that slows down their decision making, their execution, and ultimately leads to negative product quality and outcomes. Um, so there's a real opportunity that we see at Airtable for product leaders to start addressing the gaps between all those tools to gain end-to-end -end visibility and really to improve the quality of the digital products that they're building. And that's a big part of what we've been focused on is really reimagining this whole supply chain, that whole digital product life cycle with the incorporation of AI to help companies build better products and deliver them faster. And another thing, I think with the sheer volume of data and technological tools available, I think many product leaders often face the risk of the dreaded strategy drift. I mean, how can they ensure that their, their projects remain aligned, remain aligned though, especially with the overarching business goals? And, and also, uh, if we throw it into yourselves at Airtable here, what role do you guys play in facilitating some of that alignment as well? Because you must hear the phrase strategy drift so many times, right? Yeah, you know, this is a challenge I think every product leader has faced at some point. And typically what we see happen is that product teams, they come together for annual planning or quarterly planning, and everyone leaves the room feeling generally aligned about the strategy and priorities. But invariably, as the year kicks off, some of those teams start to spin up their own initiatives and local priorities and agendas start to emerge and that really leaves the product leadership with the burden of spending a tremendous amount of time and energy monitoring everything happening across their organization and trying to corral teams back on track with the company focus. And that's the problem we like to call strategy drift, this, this misalignment between a product team's effort and the, broad, the broader business priorities. Uh, when I speak to chief product leaders in the enterprise, this is the most top of mind problem that I hear about from CPOs. Are we doing what we said we were going to do? Do we actually fund with headcount the teams and the initiatives and the big rocks that are most critical to achieve, achieving the business objectives for this year? And are those things actually on track? So this is a problem that we've been very focused on addressing across the digital product supply chain with Airtable. Um, and just one example is that we're now using AI to automatically map team level projects and initiatives up to company level goals and OKRs to help CPOs identify where there's significant effort being dedicated to work that may not map to their company goals or focus and really re-examine some of those priorities. 
And at the very beginning of our conversation, you mentioned the AI word. It's all anyone's talking about at the moment. And the speed of change there is just phenomenal. I was looking at the text-to-video features earlier before uh, coming on this call with you. And it is being heralded heralded for its ability to streamline operations and ultimately enhance project visibility. So from Airtable's perspective, though, how can teams leverage AI not just for efficiency, but also for a strategic advantage in project management and the the life cycle visibility of a product too? Yeah, I'm so glad you asked this question because you're right that the vast majority of the AI applications we've seen so far, especially within enterprise SaaS, have been primarily focused on inefficiency. You know, things like write me this email faster or summarize some content for me. Um, but what I'm most excited about is the possibility for AI to start solving problems that were previously very difficult, if not impossible, to solve with humans. Uh, as one example that we're seeing within the product supply chain is that. Airtable is now allowing product teams to spot trends in their user and customer feedback based on thousands of data points by incorporating AI. So we can ingest, for example, user feedback from many sources like support tickets, community forums, sales requests, even recorded phone calls um, through Zoom or, or other avenues, and then use AI to parse all that feedback and spot product opportunities. So, you know, let's say, for example, that the prospects of a company start mentioning one important product gap uh, that's offered by a competitor and that the people who mention that product gap are the ones who end up not buying your product. In the past, a product manager probably wouldn't even hear about that until it's escalated through a sales leader and maybe forced onto their roadmap. But now using AI, we can automatically identify that trend route it to the right part of the organization, to the right product manager or team, and help those teams actually influence the conversion rate of their product proactively before it comes up as a reactive need. And the pace of technological development as well is pretty relentless right now. So is there anything you can share around um, how product leaders could adapt their strategies to keep up with this pace? Because although it is moving at a breathtaking speed, there's an argument they will never move this slow again, too. So how can they keep up with that pace? And how do you at Airtable help in navigating some of these rapid changes? Well, you're absolutely right. The pace of change continues to accelerate. And I think it's incumbent on product leaders to ensure that they are continuously placing the right bets and investing in the right areas. And so for product leaders, maintaining a balanced portfolio of the type of their investments across the organization is a really important way to keep up with that rapid pace of change. Uh, what I typically see from product leaders across the enterprise is that they'll have a goal to set, you know, let's say 50% of their headcount uh, to focus on their, their core business. Um, but then another 30, 40% on new ways to grow the business, on new products or moving into adjacent markets that they can tap into. Um, and then maybe 10% on some big moonshot bets or uh, big, swing, big swing efforts. And a way that Airtable helps with this is by giving product leaders visibility into how the team and headcount are actually invested across those buckets. Uh, not only you know how are they invested, but also even the next level down, how are these teams uh, working on or aligned to priorities that map up to the business goals? And what are those key initiatives? And are they on track or are they starting to, to flounder or move behind? Uh, and that way, you know, as these product leaders encounter shifts in the market or changes in technology or things that might alter what they're focused on as an organization, they have the data that allows them to adjust their strategy and resourcing quickly. The, the biggest challenge that we typically see is a lack of visibility around how that top line headcount and team formation actually uh, trickles down into the team level goals and the work that's happening in a large company. So with your extensive experience in product management, I've got to ask, what are some of the best practices that you'd recommend to other product leaders, especially in terms of utilizing digital tools and platforms like Airtable to overcome some of these common pain points? You've probably seen some great examples and some not so great examples, but what are the best practices that you find work best right now? 
Yeah, it's a it's a really good question. And, you know, I, I saw a stat recently that really stood out to me, um, a study from Bain in 2022 um, that found that 75 percent of CTOs say that the ROI on their software development investments don't meet their expectations. Um, pretty shocking stat, actually. Only 25 percent of CTOs say that they're actually happy with the ROI of their product development teams. Uh, and I think this really speaks to the importance of having an effective product management function within the enterprise that is really helping the, the company to make good decisions and invest in the right products across their portfolio. So, you know, in terms of best practices, what we see from really high functioning product management organizations are that one, they know their customer, you know, they bring the right data to the table, they build the right processes to really understand the customer needs, the customer landscape of alternatives and how they make buying decisions on software. Um, two is that they're building the right product. So they operate with well-prioritized roadmaps grounded in clear customer needs, clear impact to market opportunities. And three is they collaborate really effectively across the organization. So product and development teams aren't just siloed and operating off on their own, but they're engaging really heavily with marketing teams, with customer facing teams and the sales and support organizations to amplify the efforts of what they're building. And so these are areas that Airtable has been very focused on, on helping to solve, to centralize the data around this product development life cycle, to ensure that the right people across the organization have visibility at the right points in time to amplify those efforts and to create reliable transparency around the product roadmaps that both the product teams themselves, product leaders, and other business partners can trust. And as businesses continue to evolve, how do you see the role of digital tools and platforms changing in the next few years? And I appreciate it is an impossible question to ask because just 12 months ago, we were talking about chat GPT uh, or open AI large language models beating um, lawyers at passing bar exams. 12 months later, we've got text to video, which has taken the world by storm. So what trend should we be watching right now? And how do you see it all fitting into place? I, it's a long way away from that, those days of the Microsoft Access databases, right? It sure is. Um, I believe that with AI, we are entering an age of truly personalized software. And at Airtable, we've long held the belief that the people who are closest to the work, the line of business users, uh, the ones who are you know, really executing on the marketing campaigns or the product initiatives, that those people are in the best position to understand what they need from software and what they need out of the, the design of the tools that they use. Um, but there's still a large barrier to entry for most people to be able to actually create software. And even with easy to use low code platforms like Airtable, you still need to understand some basics around databases and application logic and UI design to create really useful applications. But with AI, we now see the potential for that to change and really to allow anyone with organization to very quickly create and deploy highly customized software applications just based on a few descriptions around their workflow and their needs and their requirements out of software. And we're actually already seeing that some of the analysts like Forrester are taking note of this trend and suggesting that AI will really quickly evolve the low code market and make it grow even faster by lowering the barrier to entry of who can become a software developer. And I think we should also highlight that it's not just technology that has changed. Our attitudes towards work has changed. Four years ago, the world, by the very large point, had uh, suddenly woke up to working remotely at scale. It almost happened overnight. Now we're evolving into a, a hybrid world of working. But in the context of increasingly distributed project lifestyle life cycles, how can product leaders effectively build and manage these remote teams that we're seeing now? And what have been your experience at Airtable in fostering collaboration and productivity across distances? Because it's been some journey we've all been on over the last four or five years, hasn't it? It has been quite a journey, Neil. And I've actually worked prior to Airtable, I worked for a fully remote company for, for four years. So I've been eight years now into this remote and, and hybrid environment and definitely picked up a few things along the way. 
Um, but what I'd say is the biggest area for companies to focus is really intentionality. Um, you get a lot of things for free when everyone is in the office. Shared cultural norms, rituals, hallway conversations, that all just happens naturally. When you're operating in a fully remote or hybrid environment, you need to build time and space for these types of cultural norms and cultural rituals to take shape. So creating forums for brainstorm time, for strategy discussions, um, even for uh, opportunities for teams to really form bonds and connect over cultural rituals becomes really important. At Airtable, we do something once a month called Show and Tell, where engineers and designers and product managers get up and present a demo of a working product feature that they're working on. It's open to everyone in the company. They can come see all the innovation and work that's happening within the product organizations and teams. Uh, and that's really one of the most exciting and engaging cultural rituals that we have across the company. But it really needed to be designed in a way that is friendly for those remote employees and engaging for everyone to participate in. And we started the podcast talking about you at the beginning of your journey with those um, access databases. If you look back and reflect on your journey, what have been some of the most valuable lessons that you've learned along the way as a product leader? And how have these lessons shaped your approach at Airtable? It's a little like that Steve Jobs quote, isn't it? You can't uh, join up the dots by uh, looking forward. It's only when you look back that you can see the impacts of everything that happened. But what are your biggest lessons here? Well, there's been many, but I'll, I'll leave you with uh, two that have really stuck with me. I think one, and you probably hear this a lot, is uh, people. And you know, to build great products, you really need a phenomenal team behind them, a team of product managers and product leaders that have an incredible degree of understanding of their users and their market, um, and fostering that right team and building that culture of innovation is something that I've seen to be so critical for software companies to get right. Um, so that's been a, a huge focus of mine and, and an effort that I put a lot of attention to since joining Airtable and in this role. Um, this, the second I'd say is for product leaders to really stay close to the execution of the work. And I think there's sometimes a perception that as you move up in an organization, as you move into manager and director roles, that you graduate out of the work and focus just on the people management and on the people development. But within the product management function, I've seen that that doesn't really work. To really be effective at driving the product strategy, you need to stay extremely close to the customer, to the execution, to the market. You know, In a perfect world, you can actually be your own customer, much like I was working in, uh, in the tools and the space prior to joining Airtable and having an understanding around how I made my own buying decisions as a, as a customer. Um, and I think that that's something that's really important for product readers to stay attuned to is not thinking of themselves as, as moving out of the execution, but really continuously putting yourself in the mindset of the customer, of the product manager, um, and keeping an eye on that whole landscape that impacts the dynamics of your strategy. Well, I cannot thank you enough for sharing your story today. Also, giving us the gift of your insights throughout your entire career. But before I let you go, I'm going to ask you to leave one final gift for everyone listening. And that is a book that you'd recommend that we can add to our Amazon wish list for anybody listening that wants to check that out. But what book would you like to leave everyone with and why? Of course. Uh, I love the Amazon wish list. I took a, a look at it right before uh, joining this conversation today. <laughs> So my addition to the wish list would be Competing Against Luck by Clayton Christensen. I think this book should be required reading for anyone in a product development or product management function. And if you're not familiar with that, this book is the source of the jobs to be done framework, which highlights that uh, customers don't really buy product or services. They hire them to do a job for them. And this book, I was fortunate to read uh, midway through my product development career. And it really expanded the way that I thought about product management, emphasizing the importance of the landscape of alternatives that customers face. I've always found this to be very true, very salient, especially in software, where your customers' alternatives are typically much broader 
than you might give them credit for as a product manager or product leader. Um, I still see that the vast majority of software companies are competing in some way with Excel or Word documents rather than the companies that may, they might think to be their core competitors. And this is an idea that that Clayton Christensen really um, articulates well in competing against Slack. Love that. I'm going to be checking that out. I'll add that straight to the Amazon wish list. And for anybody listening, just wanting to find out more information about Airtable, contact you or your team, or we'll just explore any of the topics we talked about today. Where would you like to point them? Of course, for anyone interested in Airtable, you can find us at Airtable.com. And for any product managers or product readers in your audience, we're always looking for great folks to come join our team. And you can find us at Airtable.com slash careers. I've got those links added to the show notes so people can find you nice and easily. And we did cover so much there from combating challenges with digital products, uh, supply chain, advising uh, advice for product leaders for addressing strategy drift. I think that's something that will resonate with so many people listening, along with, of course, leveraging AI for support. AI is a bit of a buzzword at the moment, but also for good reason. And it was interesting for me to to hear our AI is also valuable technology to streamline general business operations, employee tasks, and how AI technology can help provide teams with the necessary heightened visibility into project life cycles. So much more than efficiency. We're only scratching the surface here. But more than anything, just thank you for sharing that and your story today. Thank you for joining me. Thank you for having me, Neil. Great to connect with you. I think it's clear that the path forward for product leaders is paved with both challenges and immense opportunities, having spoken with Anthony today. And his expertise and his advice on navigating the digital product supply chain, combating strategy drift, and harnessing the power of AI for enhanced project visibility has almost offered a roadmap for success in a landscape that is constantly being reshaped by technological advancement. And I think the journey through this digital age, as Anthony has illustrated, requires a blend of strategic foresight, adaptability, and a keen understanding of the tools that are at our disposal. Ultimately, it's about knowing your customer, prioritising effectively, and fostering a culture of collaboration across teams to build products that truly meet the evolving needs of businesses and the end users alike. So I, for one, am excited to see where Anthony and the entire team at Airtable will will take their innovative solutions next. I'm equally excited about the future of digital product management. But what are your thoughts on any of the topics we covered today? How do you see AI and other technologies impacting product management in your field? Please join the conversation, share your insights as we continue exploring this fascinating world of technology and its endless possibilities whatever it is if you've got a question or even pitch to come on here just tech blog writer outlook.com or get me on linkedin twitter instagram just at neil c hughes but that's it for today so thank you for tuning in to tech talks daily i hope you will join me again tomorrow don't forget to subscribe for more episodes where we continue to unravel the complexities of technology and its role in our lives But until next time, keep innovating, keep exploring. Let's keep asking these big questions. See you all again tomorrow.